Hey there folks, uh, this is going to be another uh, quick little product review, which actually it's not going to be so quick, it's going to be a uh, kind of a four part mini series if you will. I've been looking for a new race bike for the upcoming 2016 season since I sold all my other bikes. Um, basically the only bike I have right now, to, you know, is essentially the steel bike that I built. and It's been pretty great, a great bike to train on and such, but uh, it's time to get a new bike to, you know, the races are only a month or so away, so um, I was actually kind of in the process of looking at getting a, a CAD 12 when um, I had the kind of opportunity, kind of lucked into a deal, and so I actually ended up getting this frame set right here, which it's a uh, uh, the Cannondale Super 6 Evo, and I actually had one of these before, raced it for you know, season and a half, probably two years ago, and this is, you know, I really like that bike, and this is essentially that same uh, the frame and the fork there, but this is essentially the same bike that I had then, um, you know, so just kind of some quick little reviews, and, you know, I guess I could almost call this a long-term review, because, you know, I'll kind of give you a little, kind of my thoughts on this bike, um, you know, for one, it rides pretty pretty awesome first time I rode one I was like man I need to get one of these and so you know we ended up the race team I was on we ended up getting you know a fleet of these and you know rode it for a long time and actually sold it just three or four months ago and kind of regretted it just a little bit and um, anyway so yeah the bike is a uh, you know it's carbon fiber obviously and um, this is this isn't the high mod version. This is just the standard, you know, the one you'll see on the lower end bikes. Um, you know, the one I had a few years ago was a SRAM Red model, but it was the basic frame had uh, kind of cheaper Mavic wheels and such on there. So, um, but anyway, you know, I really like that particular frame. The high mod frames, you know, I've ridden a few of those, and you know, honestly, they they almost seem a little. You know, they're a little bit lighter, but they almost seem a little, maybe too stiff. I don't know. Maybe, you know, for a bigger frame or a bigger guy, you know, I weigh about 150, 155 pounds. So, you know, it always felt, you know, those ones felt a little harsh to me. But, you know, this one kind of just had that sweet spot of, you know, felt just right as far as, you know, really good torsional, you know, as far as, you know, moving it. You know, if you try to grab hold here and here and work it back and forth like that, it's really stiff that way. But, you know, kind of the way this, you know, the little junction here, you know, and then the down here at the bottom, it kind of flattens out. So, you know, when you have that seat post in here and you put your weight back, this this part here kind of, you know, bows forward just a little bit. So you've got some really, you know, it's got a really compliant ride there, you know, and then the way that, uh, you know, the seat stays are formed here as well, they kind of have some give to them you know kind of same thing with the chain stays but um you know as far as that goes the, you know the overall ride i really liked it the uh the brake cable is uh it's internal but the uh the actual um shift cables they're you know it's an external which honestly for a shift cable you know it's nice to have the internal cables and things like that but you know it's when it comes to servicing the bike they're kind of a pain you know, I don't know how much of a, you know, aero benefit it is. You know, I know an internal cable definitely looks cleaner, but when, when it comes time to actually work on the bike or switch cables, you know, it's not a huge deal to switch the internal cables out. But, you know, this style here is definitely, definitely much easier. Um, you know, this, this particular bike, you know, like I got it at the shop where I work and it was, one that a guy had uh, ordered as a crash replacement, I believe, and so, you know, and then he just decided not to get it, so it kind of hung up on the wall for, I don't know, eight, ten months or so, and then so I kind of lucked into it, I guess, got it for a pretty, pretty nice price, so, you know, can't really complain about that. You know, I don't know if it may have been a blemish frame. I was noticing that, you know, the kind of this green stripe here is... It's a little bit off center, but you know, I'm not really into uh, more into function, I'm not really into a fashion bike, so I don't really care too much about that. But I don't know, as far as this, this actual 
color scheme, you know, it matches the uh, race team I'm going to be on next year, DNA. So, um, yeah, that's uh, it's kind of a unique, uh, I've never actually seen this, uh, really this color scheme anywhere. So, I don't know, pretty excited about that. You know, kind of some things I wanted to go through were, you know, as far as basically this part's just going to be a quick review of this frame. Kind of some things I like about it and what I don't like about it. Um, and then the other parts are going to basically be kind of some of the things I'm going to, what I'm going to build it up with. And, um, you know, one's going to be a, somewhat of a long-term review and one's going to be a review of a product that I've never even laid hands on so we're going to try that out and see how that goes and then final video is going to be a just an overall build of the bike you know kind of go through the process you know i've done several other videos of you know a little more exotic bikes and exotic component packages but um you know i'm you know pretty budget minded racer and you know this is going to be something that your average blue collar bike racer could you know, build up to have a competitive, um, you know, something that's competitive is, you know, up to a category one or two bike racer. And so, uh, yeah, that's the, you know, kind of the gist of what we're going to do here. And, um, you know, kind of, you know, a few things that I kind of went through the things I like on this frame. Um, I guess the main thing after, you know, a year and a half riding this bike, riding a CAD 10 for a year. And then, you know, I work at a shop that we sell Cannondale. Um, the, I guess the main thing that I don't like about Cannondale's and some other bikes is in this area right here. And that's the BB30 system. BB30, Press Fit 30. Uh, this one actually uses the Press Fit 30. And, you know, it's, I've owned, I think, three or four bikes that have the, either of those two. And I've messed with a lot of 30 millimeter crank bottom brackets and um, that's just kind of the I, I think the downfall of these is it's kind of a high maintenance you know if you if you've got a press fit 30 bb 30 bike and you've never had to you know you've gone a year or so or six months without any kind of noises or anything wacky going on there then you're I would say you're extremely lucky because I would say on average um, you know I've had to pull this pull these things apart and mess with them you know I'll get more into that when I review the product that I'm going to use to connect it to my cranks um, but anyway that's the, the biggest hassle I've had with this particular bike but I'm looking forward to getting it built up and um, yeah so that's my kind of initial um, review you know the bike is uh, I don't know with all the exact specs as far as how much it weighs I think it's around you know 900 grams or so it's probably 100 grams more than the high mod version but you know still a really light bike and you know it's one that i can go out and I'm not super worried you know it's like last year i was riding a trek amanda slr and you know the replacement of a bike like that if you go out and wreck it in a crit is not cheap by any means so um which this one's not you know super cheap but it's definitely probably about 75 percent cheaper so it's not gonna break the bank too bad if i have to replace it which if i did it'd probably be a cad 10 cad 12 something like that but anyway yeah that's my little review of the cannondale super 6 evo and um yeah so thanks for watching